As far as launches go, Fallout 76 didn't have the best start. However, it's been nearly six years since it was released, and with the recent DLCs and the addition of The Pit being added, some newer players are interested in the game and wondering if it's still worth playing anymore. So that's what we're going to answer today. Is Fallout 76 worth playing anymore? After all, Fallout 76 is still very much a full-on RPG with a ton of quests and role-playing. It's not like Rust, Destiny, or any other survival game, and it still has all of the elements of a normal Fallout game with the exception of it being being online. You can play with your friends, random people in the wasteland, and by yourself. The only way for me to personally answer that question is to play with both a friend and by myself. After all, this game is classified as a massively multiplayer online experience. Apparently the word massive means 24. Now for those who have played it, do you remember your experience playing it at launch? You had horrible bugs and glitches pretty much right when you left the vault, but now it's actually become a pretty smooth process. You do the normal Fallout procedure of creating your wonderful character, then going through the fantastic vault you've been sequestered to for a couple of years, gather your belongings, and step outside to see life. But not only life, you get to meet my friend Dan. Why are you naked? <laughs> What the what? fuck? I don't like the vault outfit, so I got rid of it. Once you get out of the vault, normally you're supposed to follow a quest line catered to you by a couple of NPCs. Yes, they finally introduced NPCs into the game, granted this was a couple of updates ago, but it's still better than just constantly talking to robots and loading holotapes to receive missions when the game first launched. Now I played Fallout 76 in 2020. It was an alright experience, granted I hit level 50 and I was playing on the PS4, a system that could barely run the damn thing, so how could the PC run it? And what happens if you just want to play with friends? and not care about the story of it all. Because Dan and I, we had different plans. Awesome. We're gonna make a trek all the way to the water park. Okay. And that's our goal. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. All right. And we'll just, whatever we see on the way there, we'll just uh, touch it. Or exper exper <clears throat> no, we can touch it. Okay, we can touch it. Yes, the Wavy Willard's Water Park, a staple in the lands of West Virginia. As the wiki describes it, Wavy Willard's Water Park was a popular theme park before the Great War, and I wanted to bring my friend Dan to this location because it was special to me. It was the first place I ever ventured towards when I played this game back during its release in 2018, and I remember there being a lot of dangerous creatures on the way there, and I wanted to surprise Dan with these fun little guys. Honestly, I, I just wanted Dan to like die or something in game in game and um, well the thing is with the new updates in Fallout 76 they actually made the levels of most of the creatures you fight around the same level as you thus making it possible to explore the deeper regions of the map right away now this was great for those who wanted to explore the map without having to be level gated so that's a plus for me but it made the journey to the water park kind of boring for us you know this is actually pretty tame the game felt dead, which is ironic since we're walking in a radiated wasteland, but seriously. I know Fallout games have you primarily walking for a while, but something about the lack of level disparity made the game seem less difficult and more of a walking sim with the occasional shooting. Jesus Christ, Dan. What? They're just rad stags. Yeah, I got scared. Once we got to the water park, Dan wasn't too thrilled about the destination. So I had to think on my feet and find something interesting fast. And there it was. A robot. With a quest that'll certainly win Dan over. Finding a lost child. Turns out we're actually going to be solving a murder here. Not murder. A cold case of a lost child. Cool. The quest we were on was from the original release of the game. It's it's not that exciting, and I remember it when I first got to it. I actually threw it away, never to find out what happened to this child. But I promise you, Dan and I will find that child. Wait, I want to go on the right. I didn't jump. Jesus Christ! <laughs> right, I'm gonna try this. Let's go. <laughs> don't don't talk to me. <laughs> don't talk to me. Well, we played around for a bit. And with little hope that the kid made it, we found all these clues that hinted towards their certain doom. And by walking back and forth around the regions near the water park, we came to a discovery. Oh. I didn't read what that said. The note said this. Daddy, I can't find you and I'm scared. I hear lots of sirens and a man says I gotta go with him to some secret place now, he said. Daddy gave money so I can go to the vault and be safe. Uncle Otis is at the dam. We had a fun time except he was mean so I left. 
Where are you? Yeah, apparently the kid left the vault and like he's 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 okay. I, I it's kind of anticlimactic. We ventured all around the map, back and forth, killing creatures left and right, even a bear. <gasps> You're right, we don't. <laughs> Is it disease, disease, the alkali? Oh disease. my god, damn my arm. Finding a secret way into a water plant to fight mutants. Oh. Dan. Huh. I may have found an entrance. I found a way. And we got handed an A-OK -okay that the kid was good to go. Alright, um, yeah, sure, that was a pretty bad quest to start with, and I probably should have, uh, well, done one of the newer ones with the, you know, introduced NPCs. But now with Fallout 76, you can follow one of the many main story paths that they have added since the launch of the game. Or you could build a base and complete a companion quest and have an AI follow you around and help with your daily quests. Join random public events in the map. However, there is a fourth option. You could also visit people's camps set up in the wasteland to see what they're up to. So in order to keep ourselves busy, we went to visit a random individual on the bottom right of the map. And this brings us to running into random players in the wasteland. Benedict Encumbered was a pretty impressive player. It's a great name, too. They had a high level, impressive looking armor, and knew how to communicate without a microphone. Can you hear me right now? Hell yeah, let's kill this thing. They allowed us to take down our first Scorch Beast, gave us some cool weapons, and Benedict gave us some nifty looking clothing. Do you have a cool, like, apparel outfit that you don't need that I can have? Oh? Oh, oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. oh, he's getting it. I'm gonna get dripped out. Oh, what is this? Uh, oh, that's for you, but well, there's two There's two sets for both of us. Oh, okay, hang on. Oh my god, you're my hero. Wow. This is the coolest I've felt in years. Once the formalities were in place and we knew Benedict encumbered, he brought us to a train yard to then get me blown up and leave. Oh. Uh I died. What? What? I think he also died. No. Where is he at? I don't know. Did he, re did he leave us? He's gone. That's the great thing with this game. You can literally have a moment of trust to then get backstabbed by someone. It brought me back to the days when I played Daisy and people would betray me all the time. But don't worry, you really don't lose a lot much when you die in this game. Just some supplies are left in the ground which you can easily pick back up or find somewhere else when scrapping your junk. And once Dan and I figured that this was the case with death in this game, we wanted to test our newfound weaponry. And of course, the PvP. Ow! Please. Dead? No! Oh God. God. Wait, help? <laughs> <laughs> what, do we, what do we do in this situation? <laughs> I guess we die. First the bleed out loses. What's your timer at? What's your timer at? <laughs> 20 seconds. You're a liar. I'm not a liar. It's a 20 There's seconds. no way you're a liar. You're lying right now. What is that right now? It's a 10. How are you five seconds ahead of me? I'm just better. I'm not what the? You. Oh my God! You lied <laughs> to me. <laughs> that ended up being nearly two hours worth of gameplay. And Fallout 76 is a fun time with a friend, and I could also imagine that game is a blast with even more people tagging along. I mean, the game has a paid-for system to allow you to host your own servers, which would be great for those who don't want to be bothered with randoms popping up in their games. But that's just the multiplayer experience with friends. How is the game by yourself? Well, it's a Fallout game. You can definitely have fun playing it. It's one of those games that makes for a relaxing, chill time, which is ironic since the game can be quite terrifying. Fallout 76 launched in a horrible state, but as the years went by, the game improved drastically. Following the Wastelanders update, that DLC that added the NPCs that I never talked to, the developers continued to deliver several big content updates and quality of life improvements. Steel Dawn brought the Brotherhood of Steel back into the game, and the most notable and recent big update, The Pit, added a dungeon-like mode. You have to complete a tutorial in order to start these dungeons and then fly a vertebrate over towards the pit and carry out a mission to get yourself some exquisite loot. Every day you do a couple of daily missions in order to replenish the vertebird. That way you can go right back into another dungeon. However, at the time, I was not ready for these dungeons. You're getting a bad Holy sh...
But the fact that I could even do this at such a low level is great. They aren't locking the content out from anyone. So if you had a high leveled friend or a decent random, you could probably get carried through it. Bethesda also introduced a new Battle Pass style seasons content that allows players to jump into the game every day to do daily missions and grind for loot. Yada yada, you get the idea. The Battle Passes are in every game and of course this game has one too. I would usually complain about something like this, but it's free for all players. You don't need to buy it. I found this to be a good addition to the game since it gave me a reason to jump back into some sessions more often. I saw that one of my friends recently got back into Fallout 76 and I asked them what they thought about it. Overall, they really enjoyed the game. The new additions like the pit add more into the cycle of gameplay that makes it worthwhile to play. They had played it during the beta stages and thought, wow, this game is incredibly empty. But ever since coming back, they were glad that they didn't shut it down. It's exactly what they needed right now to help with their drought of games. And that's what this game is. It's a nice experience to jump in and out of, easy to put down and easy to pick right back up. Most of the main story isn't too heavy on exposition either. 76 doesn't take itself as serious as the past titles. You don't need to play the past games to understand it either. It's here for friends to play together and have a good time, and Bethesda knows this. Before I got off of Fallout 76, I was trying to complete a daily quest, and I, I came across a group of players completing a world event. I needed some cloth, and I just went into game chat to see if I could get some help. Hi, do you have, do you have cloth? Well, they invited me into their team, they brought me back to their base, and they gave me exactly what I wanted and more. But I also stumbled across something that I felt was worth sharing. So, what is it that you, like, I guess because you all play Fallout 76 for a while, what do you do every day that makes you, like, want to keep playing the game? Uh, the neat thing that, for me, is the fact, okay, I can help, you know, lower level players, and, uh, we've met some very interesting people in our time in the game. Uh, we've met a bunch of jerks, <laughs> but for the most part, the community of 76 are very good people and willing to help each other out and to, you know, if you've got a lower player just starting out in the game, they're willing to help, help them learn the mechanics of the game, help them with any supplies they might need, weapons, you know, things of that nature. And it makes it fun. This interaction Okay, bye.